What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm your host, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Hey. Terrence is in the midst of completing a move this week, so he's not joining us again. He moved from the, uh, a close move, from to Owens Mills. Yeah, he moved like five minutes away. Right. <laughs> but, you know, hey, he moved. One of my old stomping grounds. So. There you go. Micah, are you aware this is our 250th episode? Oh man, 250. That is uh that is a uh, that is a milestone. It is. I mean, in reality, it's probably more like 265 when you count all the special non-numbered episodes. Oh, well, well, good, because this is not going to be like some 250 spectacular. So <laughs> no. Um but uh, but yeah, so two hundred fifty episodes. Carry us. We had, if we had, we're going to plan anything. I don't. I don't consider the fifty marks milestones. You got to get to the round, yeah. round hundreds. Yeah, yeah, and even then, I don't like birthdays. So uh, <laughs> if it's up to me, we're not going to do anything special. We're going to come in here. We're going to do what we always do: a kick-ass show. So uh, let's get it rocking and rolling. You and I have been playing the Octopath Traveler for the Switch, and. Yes. I remember I made the comment after I'd played a little bit of the the beta that I was looking forward to seeing how the the gameplay evolved, especially in the battle system, once you had more folks in your party uh, to add some variety to the mix. And I have to say that so far, uh, I am incredibly pleased with how that battle system works. Yeah, it is. Um, no battle is like, you know, an autopilot battle. You know what I mean? No, and, and the boss battles especially, like, I died on one of the boss battles uh, for one of the characters' origin stories a couple of times because that, that those battle points that you earn through the battle that lets you do, like, more powerful versions of your strikes are the, are the biggest thing in the game because managing them and leveraging them at the right times, you know, deciding to use them, do I want to... You know, use this to whittle down a boss's shield so I can break him, or do I want to save them to do like a massive attack once his shield is broken? You know, prioritizing which targets. I, I think I mentioned the point that in most turn-based JRPGs, the the school of thought, the rule of thumb, is that you want to kind of take on one enemy at a time. Generally, mm-hmm. it's usually the best use of your party's uh, resources, unless you have a lot of attacks that can target multiple enemies at once. But in this game, um, you really do have to have to kind of diversify your focus as as the battle goes along, especially in battles where you have three, four, and five enemies that you have to confront, especially in boss battles uh, where they summon enemies, and and those enemies can really ruin your day if you leave them lingering on the battlefield a little too long. It's it's been it's been really uh it's been really interesting to play. I ha- and I can't think of a turn based. JRPG that I've gotten as immersed in yet uh, so far, pro- probably going back to the PlayStation era. Honestly, PlayStation One. Yeah, this uh, this battle system is is very intriguing, and I, um, you know, I like you tend to whittle down enemies one at a time, take on the ads, and then take on the boss one at a time. And uh, I had to get out of that mindset, and that was that was throwing me for a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, but I like, you know, having to test different weapons to see who is vulnerable to what. And, and I used to do the whole, let's whittle them down uh, as soon as I get, you know, it's, oh, I got two, I got two bonus things. Uh, let me just burn these two to try and hurry up and whittle down this, this uh, level A shield. But then I'm like, oh, okay, now he's down, but I can only do one attack. And then this is kind of you know, whack, like, like, so I gotta, so I gotta, I, I, I learned how to, uh, be patient and save up those, uh, those boosts for, uh, big, big, massive attacks. Um, yeah, man, I'm digging this game. Um, I only have, uh, I didn't know that the person you pick initially is the person you are kind of stuck with in your party, no matter what. Yeah, that was one thing that they didn't make very clear uh, from the outset of the game. And it, like Mike is saying, so you can freely choose which of the eight heroes to to start the journey with. But I think that that hero has to remain in your party at least until, uh, until you, you complete their story. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I started with Ophelia just because I kind of wanted to get her story out of the way, mm. not because I f- thought that it would be compelling. And uh, as soon as I, and then I went counterclockwise. And then as soon as I got down to Primrose, they were like, mm, nope, you got to keep Ophelia in your party. And I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I guess I'm stuck with this mage. That's um, funny because I'm working, I, I'm working clockwise. I started with, um, uh, Therion, and I'm yeah. working in the clockwise direction. So I have him. Uh, I have the Huntress, whose name I don't recall. I have Ophelia, and now I have Cyrus in my party. Yeah, I should have started with uh, Therion because, I, but I didn't know like he can heal himself, and that's all I really, that's all I really need is for someone to be able to heal themselves. Um, but yeah, everybody, everybody has um, a role to play. Well, of course, everybody has a role to play, but. It, nobody feels there are no useless characters i think yeah, thank you there are no yeah, useless I mean, characters. i mean look, i mean final fantasy 6 is probably my favorite one of my favorite rpgs of all time there are some characters in that game that i in all the times i've played through it i've never given any any party time to just because they were useless to me i didn't like their abilities and i didn't like what they brought to the table but yeah like you said in this game everyone has a niche everyone has a role to play in battle even weaker characters um you know you mentioned ophelia uh first of all kind of cool to have a, a role-playing game where it's worth it to attack with your staff i've never yeah. seen, <laughs> yeah. I've never seen an rpg that made made good use out of a staff before <laughs> um but like i said her recruit action i thought it was kind of lame at first and then like some of the people that you can pick up to recruit and bring into battle with you are are very handy um, and Cyrus's ability is that he can actually identify one of the enemy's weaknesses as soon as you enter a battle that you didn't know before. So that's that's been very useful as well um, as we've gone to. So yeah, it's been really good. I, I've enjoyed the stories so far. There's nothing that so far that's really blown my my socks off in terms of storytelling. Um, the stories are are fairly tropey uh, in terms of RPG stats go but just the way that the uh the game is designed is has been really interesting um the one crit- criticism i will have and again i don't know if this changes as time goes along is that there's not much uh yet at least in the way of exploration um so far going around the the inner part of the world that you start out doing is fairly linear um you there's very limited pathways to choose in terms of in terms of where you can go there's not like a world map that you can just walk around on like a Final Fantasy game and and do that. Um, the other thing is that the side quests have not been too alluring so far that I've that I've come across. So. Yeah, the, the side quests are kind of whack, man. Like they they don't really they don't really pro- they're just like yeah, I got this problem, and then there it is. Like the, the, and then the, the you go into your log. To, I'd look at the quest and be like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be doing something. And the quest log literally just says, yeah, this guy's got a problem. Yeah, it doesn't really give you much in the way of guidance, does it? And you can't, yeah. <laughs> you can't do... We're so spoiled now by Western RPGs that you can toggle like an active quest and the map yeah. will kind of... Just tell you where to go. Yeah. yeah. So on the one hand, like when I figure it out, I'm like, oh, okay. And I get some cheap experience from it. But I, they're not... Like, I don't find them engaging enough to want to do them. I agree. I mean, and for me, I'm ignoring them completely because they really don't add anything to the to the flavor of the game. Um, I will also tell you, uh, I found one of this game's versions of, of a cactuar monster. Oh, really? Uh, they're called Kates. They're like these cats that, uh, that pop up. And I, I didn't realize what I was getting at, but I killed one. And it gave me like a thousand experience points Damn. and I level like I, I gained like five levels on all my characters basically <laughs> in one battle. I read about it after the fact, apparently they're hard to kill and, and, and deal very little damage, but they escape rather quickly from battle. Oh. So uh, that was a weird, random fun thing. Oh, well, there you go. So, but yeah. I, yeah. Um, I, I, really good so far. My, my only gripe is that I thought the, um, I thought the interaction with the stories and maybe I'm just not far enough along. I haven't, you know, recruited everybody yet, but I thought that these people coming together would mean a little more Mm -hmm. like, I, I, all right, I'm a failure. And I set off and I set off to go find, uh, Hanit. And it's like, 
the game just the game's narrator just tells you, yeah, and it's gonna need some strong allies on her journey. And it's like, all right, well, you wanna you wanna help me out? Like, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll help you. Like they don't feel like like it like imagine just walking down the street and you just chat somebody up real quick and it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna help you go to work. <laughs> like it just I, I thought that would be I thought there would be something that would bring these eight random strangers together more than just me walking around the first little ring of the map. I mean, it's possible there could be, like I said, we're still in I hope so. early times with the game. And, and allegedly, so like, this is one of the things that a lot of the reviews didn't mention because apparently most of the reviews were completing up to the point where they finished one person's story. Because once you do one, your main guy's story, uh, credits can roll on the game basically. Mm -hmm. But apparently from what I've heard that if you finished all eight stories, there is like a final boss adventure thing. Oh, so I don't know. Again, I don't know if that ties into the plot at all. Um, I would agree with you that, yeah, it does feel a little disjointed from a narrative standpoint for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we'll see. Like I said, we will see one as the game opens up. Cause like you said, we're still relatively early into the, into the mix so far. But, uh, um, I got a question for you and I'm really late. All right. So forgive my ignorance. I just started playing destiny again. Mm -hmm. now, when I played destiny before I played, uh, the main campaign of, um, of the latest expansion. Oh, and cool. then, right. And that was it. That's all I did. Right. Uh, and I put it down for a while cause I was kind of destinyed out and I went and bought the, um, forsaken, and I'm like, all right, let me try and get back into this. And I hop into a strike and I'm like, whoa, this strike is really difficult for some strange reason. Like I know I'm under leveled, but I'm not that under leveled. Was it a heroic strike or was it a Yeah, it was a heroic strike. The, so <laughs> so well, remember, I don't know if you remember this, but they added so they went back to do what they did in Destiny One. They added modifiers now. When did they do that? A couple months ago, I think, or like a month ago. Or so. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're much more difficult now. Yeah, man. I'm like, God damn. Oh, I mean, let me tell you. So I, I am not underleveled. And I did a heroic strike. Now, this was the first time. So Warmind added three strikes, uh, much like Curse of Osiris did. Two of them you sort of played already in the campaign in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of them is exclusive to PlayStation 4. Uh, and that's the one I did for the first time the other day with the modifiers on. And it took a real long fucking time because that thing was really, really difficult. Was it the giant scion? Yes. Yo, man. Well, but you know why it's difficult? Because the majority of the enemies that were in that strike were Cabal. And the, the modifier this week is solar damage does more you know way more damage and that's all cabal enemies yeah. <laughs> i was like also, it's, I mean, it's a, even with me being at the right level and i'm assuming playing with two well-leveled people as well it still took me a good 45 minutes to clear that strike it's like god damn this is really hard man really hard i think that strikes a little bit difficult anyway just because of the sheer amount of ads yeah but uh but yeah the modifiers didn't do it uh, any favors because the other the other modifier that was on this week was that you had very low shields and health but your recovery was super fast <laughs> so, yeah you really had to, you really had to play uh with 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 some care and defensive uh mindset jesus all right all right so i'm not going crazy like i, I know i hadn't been playing destiny in a while but goodness gracious i wasn't this bad no it's it's like i said you just you walked into the worst possible strike <laughs> and the worst possible modifier <laughs> Uh, especially for someone dusting off the uh because like because last week i did the strikes milestone and i kind of I, I wouldn't say breeze through but i jauntily strolled through most of the strikes so yeah the modifiers were a little bit more friendly god damn so all right glad they're back because like i said the heroic strikes needed something to differentiate them from the uh from hey i mean it was it uh, it felt like a self uh, a sense of accomplishment i got that sense of accomplishment once we finished it so I don't mind it. I just didn't know it was there. I, yeah. I'm going crazy, man. Have you hit the Have you hit the new wall yet? Uh, three forty. Uh, yeah. I'm at like three. I'm at like three forty four okay. with weapons that I don't like. So it, it, it with the stuff that I do like, I'm at like three forty two, three forty three. 
So they are, I mean, I found legendaries uh, have been more plentiful for some reason. I guess oh, they yeah. increased the drop rates or just made it easier to get stuff. So I, I'm swimming in shards right now. So I would imagine if you do some grinding, you'll be able to to do the same. All right. To upgrade yeah. your stuff. So, but yeah, you you are at the grind wall now. So. Yeah, God damn. <laughs> Wait, man, you know what they're bumping it up to with when Forsaken comes out? What's that? Six hundred. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> when Forsaken comes out, the new max parallels will be six hundred. Six hundred. Six hundred. I mean, are they gonna are they gonna be throwing these things out liberally? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming that the grind wall will be a little bit more liberal until you reach that. But I think, but I, but when people complain that, oh, you know, I get to max level in three weeks because I play ten hours a day and I've been playing ten hours a day and I and I've already hit max level. So what am I supposed to do now? I've already got all the exotics. What am I gonna just run the raid every week and run the nightfall every week? <laughs> That's it. That's Bungie's like, all right, you want you want a long tail. Cool. Power. We're going to jack it up 200 levels. All right. And then we're going to get a bunch of complaints about, oh, it's too big. It's too, too long. long to do 600. <laughs> I, I can't do the high level activities till I get to 550 and I'm only, I'm stuck at 475. <laughs> this is bullshit. I should be able to do everything on day one. <laughs> can't, can't, can't please everybody. Can't please everyone. Much like, uh, We'll, we'll, we'll call them a bunch of Pittsburgh wrestling fans. Much like a Pittsburgh crowd. You just can't please people. Ah! Wait, what? Huh? Huh? They go to densepixels.com slash fans if you're wondering what we're talking about. We're referring to the Jesus stream Christ. pay-per-view last night. It was louder when they had to clock up there. Like, God damn. You know, like even the wrestlers in the ring while getting choked out. It's like, oh. Yeah, I know, man. It's fucking ridiculous. Like, <laughs> we might, we, I might end up ranting about that later in the show. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a little housekeeping. Go to youtube.com slash dense pixels. Subscribe to the podcast and ring the bell. That way you get notified whenever we post new episodes of this podcast in video format as we do. Uh, make sure you check out densepixels.com slash premium. Become a premium member of TNP Studios. It's only $5 a month or $50 for the entire year. Uh, we had our wires crossed a little bit. We are recording the Austin Powers episode of the Men of the Golden Tongues this week uh, for your consumption early next week. So look forward to that. But you also get the Look Forward Political Podcast. You get the men, the airing of grievances with Micah and Jay. And you get the No Time to Bleed Action Movie Podcast. Uh, premium membership is awesome. Again, put the $5 down. Try it out for a month. I guarantee you'll be back for the 50 uh, once you see all the content that we have on there. And then, of course, well, no matter what podcatching app you use, be it Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, uh, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Podbean, whatever. Find us, subscribe to us. That way we can deliver episodes to you in the middle of the night like a podcast ninja. <laughs> and also subscribe to the other TNP shows, The Nerdpocalypse, Black on Black Cinema, uh, Coming Attractions, Tabletop for Two. I'm sure there's some that I'm missing. That's Coming okay. Distractions. Coming Distractions. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. It's a pun. It's a play on words, <laughs> as it were. Uh, new releases. Sonic Mania Plus coming out this week um the the plus version of sonic mania someone someone in the in the in the dense pixels group today asked for quality sonic games and i was confused by the question <laughs> it didn't make sense to me it's it's impossible to divide by zero Anox, Anox, yeah, that's right <laughs> Uh, you also get Tempest 4000, uh, an arcade resurrection of a classic arcade game that I have never heard of personally. And Adventure Time, uh, Pirates of the Enchiridion, I believe is how that's pronounced. Uh, it's coming out as well. Digitally, the two games that looked the most interesting were Nidhogg 2 and Mother Gunship, which is a, I think, a bullet hell game combined with Dead Rising because you can apparently construct uh, your crazy guns to use to kill uh, hordes of enemies as you go looked interesting and some release date changes slash announcements uh code vein has been delayed into 2019 so we will see code vein next year a game that i was not very impressed by from the looks that they gave us of that game at e3 i gotta tell you and uh subnautica is coming to ps4 later this year so xbox is like oh we got your no man's sky over here and places like well we got your subnautica right over here 
the swap and survival games. <laughs> Very exciting. So those are all of your new releases. Uh, let us get right into the headlines for the week. So, Micah, uh, James Olin is a highly decorated designer uh, from Bioware. He worked on, he was the lead designer of KOTOR, uh, both Baldur's Gate games, Neverwinter Nights, uh, Dragon Age Origins, a game that you might have heard of, Micah, yep. a little bit. Yep. And he was the director of Star Wars The Old Republic. He's been with Bioware for 22 years, but no longer. Uh, he announced last week that after 22 years, he has retired from Bioware, stating he needs to take a break from the games industry and work on something a little bit more small and a little bit more personal, uh, which in this case happens to be a Dra Dungeons and Dragons source book uh, called Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. So, hmm. yeah, I, I uh, as soon as he said I need to work on something more personal, that that means a book. <laughs> that means a book. Um, that's fine. Hey, man. 22 years most people um leave a job every three four years uh especially in the tech industry so 22 years man and he's still a young looking guy well relatively speaking mm -hmm. uh he looks like he's in his mid 40s so that's pretty awesome so of, of course people are freaking the fuck out because this is yet another high you know high rank mm -hmm departure uh from the bio or ranks in the past uh you know year and a half basically i think people just want to hate bioware at this point and um are trying to use any little excuse to to try and take a dump on that company um could look, you man. go hit pause on that go back in time seven years so before the release of Mass Effect 3, can you imagine that we would have ended up at this point with public opinion towards Bioware? No, not at all. Not at all. They were the uh, the PC darling that uh, also made good console games. And then, you know, apparently if you lie down with dogs, you get fleas um, because they all they do is make filthy console games and uh they've lost their their pristine pc roots and now look at them i mean indie wrestlers even when they make it to the big time still usually keep their fan base and their following <laughs> and wrestling fans are maybe the third worst fans in the world who were the top two i'm curious to see um i'll probably agree with you but um you know what? Maybe wrestling fans might be second because I can only think of one other group, one other fandom that is worse. Star Wars fans. And they're Star Wars fans. Yeah. They're horrible human beings. All of them. I don't disagree. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, wrestling fans, they're up there. They're up yeah, there. Yeah, they are. You know. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're all, they're taking the... They're taking the they're taking smark and they're rhyming it with snark and they think that you know, oh look, look at me I'm smarter than everybody, so I'm snarky. Snark snark is 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 the poor man's version of wit. Stop it. <laughs> it like I said, I just I, how how dare people want to enjoy their wrestling matches with that? Yeah, and how dare people want to enjoy Bioware games? Um. You know, if this one dude leaving must mean that, you know, oh, wow, oh, oh, Bioware is, is they're, they're continuing to go downhill. Nah, man. It's just people, people retire. Mm -hmm. Stop hating on Bioware. If you hate them so much, uh, um, I don't know what you do. Plus, like, do you really think that companies that are, that are this big and well organized, like, just have like a void that's left when a guy like this moves on? There's always another guy waiting in the wings that's looking to you know, take take that next step up. Yeah, but who is it, though? But who is it? We don't know this guy. I mean, we didn't know this guy who's retiring, but who's this new guy? We don't know him. Like I said, there's, there's, always, there's always someone hungry and always look, someone looking to prove themselves. Yeah, man. Give somebody a chance, man. So, but like I said, good, good for James Olin. Like I said, like, like we said, 22 years is a long fucking time to spend anywhere. 
Yeah. Especially in the games industry. That's like three lifetimes. In <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I get it. I get why he'd want to move away, um, take a break, something maybe it's a little bit more, you know, less stressful. Uh, a little bit lower key. I mean, not the D and D is low key, but I mean, compared to compared to working on, you know, the next Bioware game, I'm sure by comparison, it's quite low key. Yeah. So, uh, so good for you, James Olin, and uh, stop freaking out, fucking Bioware pe- fans. As I right. put that up. <laughs> right. Um. So apparently, I so I I I've talked about Splatoon two on the show, a game that was one of my most pleasant surprises from last year, and I sunk a. Probably 15, 20 hours into the multiplayer, primarily for Splatoon 2. I had a good time, but it's something I haven't played in several months. Well, it's a good thing, apparently, because right now, Splatoon 2's multiplayer is overrun with hackers who have figured out ways to claim easy instant wins in the game, but also somehow get around the game's abuse reporting system, Hmm. if you can believe that. Uh, it's it's such a problem that someone, a righteous hack, hacker, a hacker on the side of good, hacked the game's leaderboards to display a message that demanded that Nintendo install anti-cheating measures or clean up the abuse of the game in some way, shape, or form. Uh, in the immortal words of uh, one John Spartan, you gotta send a maniac to catch a maniac, man. I'm gonna need you to actually pronounce say that in the in the voice. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to top that. I, I got a voice <laughs> thing going right now. I don't think I'll be able to top that, but runs <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> oh shit. I love that movie. <laughs> it's it's because it's an amazing movie. <laughs> Because oh, man. you paper in the bathroom, all you have is these three seashells. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a little bit sussy, devilish, man. Oh, man. But, yeah, so apparently Splatoon 2, not fun to play right now. So what's happening is that somehow these guys are, within seconds of the match, is able to basically get their special weapon ready which usually takes a little while and basically just like team wipe the entire team essentially and cover the map in his team's ink color so and you but you can't report them apparently so it's 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 a problem because it's you know they can't for whatever reason they can't report them because again nintendo a little behind the times when it comes to multiplayer on this stuff well, you know, this is their first like serious foray into it, right? So, I mean, with the it's a, but it's not their first foray. That's the problem. It's not like Splatoon wasn't on the Wii U originally. Oh well, that's what I'm saying. That's that with their years of of beta testing multiplayer, essentially, they there's no way they could have they could have predicted something like cheating happening on a on a Nintendo system. Yeah, but I mean, so I, I guess I guess people that like were skeptical about their online platform and having to pay for it. This is why, because if you're not going to be able to weed this out, like you know, Mario Kart Seven, I remember on three DS had a lot of issues, not with cheating, but there were some techniques that you could do that were very difficult, <laughs> with snaking and stuff like that. Oh, and by the way, the player who hacked the leaderboards to uh, to pointed out to Nintendo and plead with them to, to stop this stuff. He got an indefinite suspension from uh from Splatoon 2's multiplayer. Because of course he did. Because of course he did. Because he got he got thrown in the fridge for 40 years. And all of a sudden, uh when he finally hacks his way out of it, it'll be in some weird Orwellian Nintendo future. But yeah. Fix this shit, Nintendo. I mean, you can't, you can't, you cannot ask people to play to pay for online and have problems like that that exist. You have to either like to have a more robust reporting system that can, you know, allow you to report these guys without griefing people just for the sake of fucking doing it, or find ways to catch people exploiting your code. And again, it's it's just inexperience and you know not having the the infrastructure in place, I guess, to, to be ready for this stuff. But I mean, Splatoon 2 is one of your tentpole multiplayer games. It's, it's important that you get this fixed. Yeah, so. I agree. 
So third and finally for headlines. Uh, Na- so Nathan Fillion was doing some teases on Twitter last week, and a lot of people speculated it was something to do with Uncharted. Uh, what is it? What could it mean though? Has, has, has Nathan Fillion been cast as Nathan Drake in the still rumored feature length film that's being made? Probably not. Nathan Fillion's not quite a big enough name to to do that. It's, maybe he's going to be Nathan Drake in, in in the next Uncharted video game, perhaps instead of uh, Nolan North. Highly unlikely. I can't see why that would ever happen. Well, what ended up being is a 15 minute feature length, or not feature length, but 15 minute length fan film uh, directed by Alan Unger, uh, who has been a writer on a couple of really shitty B movies because I looked at his IMDb uh, beforehand. But uh, but yeah, so Nathan Drake, uh, Nathan Fillion playing Nathan Drake in this 15 minute film. Uh, it also stars Stephen Lang as Sully, which is very weird. And uh, Ernie Reyes Jr., formerly of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original TMNT films. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch this. Uh, how was it? It was fine. Um, every, I mean, Nathan Fillion's one of those guys that had has been fan casted uh, for a long time as Nathan Drake because he sounds like Nolan North and he looks like Nathan Drake, which by proxy means he kind of look like looks like Nolan North. He just looks like a more movie star version of Nolan North, essentially. But uh, but yeah, so he was fine. Um, the action was fine. They did the stupid cute thing where when they when he got into a gunplay sequence, they zoomed out and used the third person camera view that the game uses, which is unnecessary, honestly, in my opinion. I, I don't think you needed to do that. Um, but it was fine. Stephen Lang was fine as Sully. It was it was it was a fun 15 minute thing. I would recommend checking it out. It's on YouTube right now. Um like I said, it's fun. It's neat. I don't think it's going to make you like salivate to be like, oh my God, they're you to cast Nathan Fillion in the official Uncharted movie. I don't think that that's going to happen based on the, the strength of this. Uh, but if it gets a lot of views and a lot of likes and it catches Sony's attention, maybe it might encourage them to move forward with the fucking actual movie that has been, you know, rumored for years and years now at this point. So um, according to the internet's, Tom Holland, a.k.a. Spider-Man, is uh, scheduled to be Nathan Drake. He looks awful young. Yeah, he does look awful young, but he does kind of look like teenage Drake. Okay. I don't Um, don't know if I want teenage Drake in the first Uncharted movie. Oh, I know I don't want teenage Drake in the first Uncharted movie. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's just... I don't know. I I'm still doing research. I just googled Nathan Drake and it says played by Tom Holland. I'm like, wait, what? So who knows? Um, look, this is how Deadpool got made. This is how the Deadpool that we know now got made. Um, do you think that? Well, you don't really think that this is going to be something that uh, Sony looks at and says, "Hey, let's cast this old dude." Because yeah, look. I don't think that's gonna happen. Nathan Fillion is is a little too old to play. He is, he's he's long in the tooth to play this particular role, and uh, it sucks. Because look, he would have been um, he would have been uh, the the best casting since Patrick Stewart was cast as Professor Xavier. That's a pretty bold claim. Oh, I think it is apt in this case. Uh, the guy looks and acts and sounds just like, uh, I mean, the only way you could have cast, uh, Nathan Drake any better was to cast Nolan North in the movie. Why don't they just cast Nolan North in the movie? He could, like he, could hit, he could hit the gym for, for, for six months before. Look, if Nathan Fillion is not a big enough name, you damn sure know Nolan North isn't. The last movie you seen Nolan North in. Oh, he, well, he's not a movie actor. It's a voice He actor. was in a movie. He was in a Star Trek movie, believe it or not. Oh, was he really? Yeah, he was a random dude in Star Trek. So he was, so, but, so, but Gerard Butler was once a random dude in James Bond. <laughs> and look what happened to him. <laughs> Gerard Butler was one of the dudes, you know, on the fucking stealth boat ship. In Tarn of Guys. <laughs> now he's big movie star. Oh, man. So, like I said, it's, uh, it, it was fun. It was a fun thing. Um, I certainly think this was better than the Mortal Kombat uh, short teaser film that led to the very mediocre Mortal Kombat web series. 
that we talked about before that we started airing. Um, uh, there's been a few of these that you've seen over the years, but it's like I said, it was fine. I, everyone, everyone can relax now. They've seen Nathan Fillion as Nathan Drake. You've now gotten to live it, and uh, and yeah. So that is it for headlines. Before we move on, uh, look as you're listening to this on Monday night slash early Tuesday morning, uh, it is still Amazon Prime Day, the biggest fucking Amazon sale of the year, and some of the deals are crazy, crazy deals, including on their stuff especially. So if you're listening to this, I want you to hit pause. Not yet. Hit pause after this ad read and go to <laughs> densepixels.com slash Amazon and buy up all your Prime Day shit using our Amazon link because you pay the same low Prime Day prices, but we get a small percentage of the sale. And that helps support your favorite podcast. Then you can come back and then hit play and, and listen to the rest of the episode because you're going to want to listen to these top stories because they're very good. But again, densepixels.com slash Amazon. Buy your Prime Day shit. Give us money. Mike, get taken away. Um, so a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, Jessica Price, the former narrative designer on Guild Wars 2. Uh, we spoke about how she uh, wrote a, a lengthy Twitter, like, I, I don't know if it's a rant per se. Response. Uh, yeah, she was just talking about you know, the differences between writing characters for linear narrative driven games and writing uh, for characters in MMOs. All of a sudden, this dude, YouTuber by the name of Deror, uh, De Deroit, Deror, um, hopped in and gave his two cents. Um, he tried to do it in uh, what he believed was a respectful manner. She did not see it that way. Um, because she's probably bombarded with uh, a bunch of people telling her how to do her job, and uh, she she kind of she kind of took it out on him. Guy apologized, um, and um, you would think that would be the end of it, but no, you wouldn't think because the gamer gators came for her. Yeah, man, they came, they came, and uh, uh, literally and figuratively, when they see uh, a woman. Uh, in, in some sort of, uh, stress, they, they come in with their hard dicks so they can fucking beat her over the head because that's what they do. Um, and she started getting, going into a back and forth with people and, uh, eventually, uh, she was let go from the company, uh, arena net. Um, uh, and, and, uh, it was so chaotic that, uh, one of her coworkers, a dude named Peter Freeze, uh, he was trying to stick up for, you know, his coworker, like, Hey, you know, chill. Um, a written that was like, Nope, sorry, buddy. You want to, you want to stick up for your, you want to stick up for your coworkers? Well, fuck you. You're fired too. Um, and then this was, we spoke about it, uh, a while ago and, uh, I, I was of the opinion that um, uh, nearly everybody was in the wrong in this case. Um, and I know that's not like a, that's not what the internet wants. They want, you know, a definitive pick a side, Micah. Pick a side. Not right? sitting on the fence. Yeah, your asshole must hurt from riding the fence. Like, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right just calm down. Uh, well, here's an update. Um, uh, Price's boss. Uh, agreed with the fans and price was called into a meeting with the manager from the narrative development, a human resources person and arena net president, Mike O'Brien, who said, who issued a statement, uh, on the guilt wars two forums quote recently, two of our employees failed to uphold our standards of communicating with players. Their attacks on the community were unacceptable as a result. They are no longer with this company. I wanted, I want to be clear that the statements they made do not reflect the views of ArenaNet at all. As a company, we strive, uh, we always strive to have a collaborative relationship with the Guild Wars community. We value your input. Uh, we make this game for you. Um, well, Jessica Price had a very different opinion. On yeah, man, she was like, fire. she was like, yo, this dude is lying his ass off. Well, the, again, like, the, my favorite quote is that she says that ArenaNet folded like a cheap card table in in firing her. Uh, she claims she was given no opportunity to argue her case. Uh, her immediate superior was on vacation, 
Uh, he O'Brien, who is again the uh, Arena president, said he insisted the developers have to be friends with the company's customers, and that it was unacceptable for me to say that we aren't even when we're not on the clock. And he told me that she would look back on this and regret it because we were doing great work and I had ruined it. He said, "Um, this thing is getting real ugly, man." Uh, it is getting incredibly ugly, especially because she uh, she also said that she was given no previous reprimands by her bosses for this sort of behavior. Because I remember that was one of the things that people talked about as well. You know, she what if she's gotten into it before with people? Well, even, even if she had, nobody apparently gave a shit. Right. Um, yeah, man. I, I I don't know who to. Well, I I'm kind of inclined to believe with to believe Jessica. Um, this is. This is, and I look. I'm 100 uh, percent from top to bottom. Uh, I think that uh, Price and uh, the YouTuber, I think they uh, they had an honest misunderstanding. I really think they do. Somebody said one thing, somebody took it another way. Um, all right, that's fine, right? But the way, and then of course, here come the the troglodytes. They come in and they start jumping on whomever, right? Uh, but arena net is 100 they're the first people at fault they they showed in my opinion no uh loyalty for to the person that they employed um it's just yeah they folded they folded like a cheap deck of cards or whatever she said um o'brien released an additional statement saying that um, that she that Jessica was essentially just attacking the community and had labeled herself uh, an arena net employee and and that they got a bunch of concerns that she was harassing people uh, or responding to harassment and they're like well we won't tolerate harassment and if you feel that you've been harassed then she should have come to us first and we would have dealt with it. But instead she dealt with the harassment directly as a cop out, man, what are you doing? Well, and, and the other cop out too, like at the end of that additional statement that he made, he says, whatever you thought of the tweets, but they, these two were part of the wonderful team that brought you the kidnapping scene in episode one of Guild Wars two, which was well executed. And that's how I want to remember their time at arena net. Like really dude? Like that's where we're gonna go. <laughs> I, like I said, I, I think I think certainly in retrospect, and and also given what we're gonna be talking about in our next story, uh, ArenaNet probably did the worst out of anybody in this story. Yeah, um, honestly, man, I I just they they should be ashamed, and uh, because stuff like this has uh, a rippling effect. Uh, oh, look at that. In the wake of the arena net uh, firings, women game developers are expressing a new wave of online harassment. Um, stories have emerged on Twitter of attempts by social media users to bring down developers, particularly outspoken women, merely for voicing their own opinions online. The new wave of harassment raises serious questions about how game companies support staff in dealing with online abuse and the lack of structures in place to deal with problems arising from interactions between developers and game communities. There was one example this article gives of uh, Dr. Hazel Monforton. Uh, she is a narrative designer for Dishonored, um, for Arcane Studios, and and the harassment occurred when she engaged in a debate with a Twitter user over the arena net followings and response. The user tweeted at Arcane Studios and threatened to end his, his uh, custom with the company due to the perceived abuse that he had received from Dr. Hazel Monforton. Um, the guy tweeted, after, be after being verbally abused by one of your employees over my opinion of the arena net debacle, I derided by and derided by her followers, I am no longer a customer. I bought Dishonored 1 and 2 and Prey. Great titles. Thanks for the fun times. 
which led to a change.org petition that somebody calling for oh. her put up calling for her fucking firing. Change.org it has to be one of the dumbest ideas uh, ever to come out of any administration. Um, it doesn't do anything. And it gives petty people the opportunity to be even more petty. And it just is stupid. Um, you know what else is stupid? Ben M. Ben W. Matson and his ilk, who want to get somebody fired because they disagree with you. This is the shit I'm talking about, yo. This is the shit that I'm like. I'm like you that this could have happened in the wake of taking to the defense <laughs> right of the unruly mob. I don't. I can't believe it. I'm shocked. Shocked <laughs> that this uh that this would have emboldened the the people coming for you know these female game developers shocked i say oh my god man uh thanks arena net you just fucked up the entire industry seriously (laughs) you did you seriously did and that might be hyperbolic i don't really care (laughs) yeah fuck it i don't really care i mean it's it's the like i said the it it felt like a knee-jerk reaction they made the decision a day to fire jessica price Within a day, and uh, you have to, and and again, you, you, these things have an effect. These things have a will have wide-reaching consequences, and you should think about that. And when you, and and again, it's one thing. So it's one thing if they had let her go and somehow crafted some bullshit statement about you know, oh, it wasn't because of this, it was because of this. You know right. what I mean? But right. when you directly say, "Hey, this," she responded to our gamers. We thought that was unacceptable. And so we're firing her because of this. You just said, "Hey, if we if we push hard enough, we can we can control who gets to make games and who doesn't." Yeah. So if so, if, so if someone pisses us off, if we if some perceived slight comes our way, or if we just hate women, spoilers. Right. Probably. That's all it is. <laughs> probably just that. That's all it is. It's a bunch of women living their best lives, living the life that you wish you had. And it, just, it like it's so it's it's just. <laughs> Good job, incels. You fucking. What the fuck is an incel, by the way? I, <laughs> I barely know what it is. Uh, Apparently, means inadvertently celibate. It's what we used to call people who just couldn't get laid. <laughs> I hear that term all the time. I'm like, you know, it's like a class, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, heard, I started hearing the term a month ago, and I was like, what? Like, like again, this is when you get older, kids. I, I know when you're young, you, like you look at your parents and, and they seem out of touch with your generation. You think that'll never happen to me. No, it will. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> it Absolutely. will, man. <laughs> and in some involuntarily celibate. You're a dork. You're a dork or a creep. Like, uh, you know, deal with it. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 20. I didn't go blow up a school or, or shoot a bunch of people. And I didn't label myself as I'm involuntarily celibate. Fuck off. You creep. You sound like a rapist, by the way. That's, that shit sounds very, very rapey. I'm involuntarily celibate. I wouldn't be celibate if I, if I didn't have to be. I just haven't found the right victim yet. I mean, woman. <laughs> Fucking creeps, man. You're not getting any arguments on this side of the uh, this side of the microphone. I got to tell you. Yeah, this whole thing is this whole thing is a mess, and I blame Arena Net. Fuck y'all, man. I'm, I'm I refuse to to play a game that I was never going to play anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want to start a you want to start a groundswell to get Mike O'Brien tossed out of Arena Net? Yeah, yeah. I wonder I wonder if that'll work. <laughs> something tells me something tells me it won't. Uh, Jessica was like, she, and look, she embraced all her petty. She was like, look, I'm telling everybody. First of all, I got a bunch of people offering me jobs. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. I got a bunch of people, uh, hollering at me, trying to get me to work for them because I'm awesome. And second of all, I'm telling everybody I know not to work with a, for arena net. Fuck you. Ima- imagine the damage they also did to the morale within the company. Yeah, man. Like, let's just say uh, 50% of your company is uh, female workers. Yo, yeah. I mean, can you imagine walk, walking around the arena net halls right now? And like, and again, people, some people will say, oh, yeah, how else they can manage their company? There's ways to do this without, like, 
jumping right to that shit. Like you could have easily reprimanded her and you could have made her issue a public apology. Yeah. That and then if she continued to do that shit at that point, yeah, then you can let her go and people won't get pissed off because they'll be like, Yeah, she probably deserved that shit because she wouldn't stop going after people on Twitter. Right. But yeah, one this one and done bullshit. Yeah, who the, what the what the fuck is zero tolerance in the video game industry against the the marginalized? Wait, what? All right, get out of here, Rena. Net. Uh, you know what else? You know who else needs to get out of here? UK parents. Not good. UK parents, by the way, this this happens to be a UK story. <laughs> I would imagine the numbers are probably rather similar on this side of the pond as if, well, if not. If not Morse, right? <laughs> Apparently, more than half of their parents let their let their kids play uh, games that are eighteen plus, basically M rated games, super violent games, hyper violent games. Uh, Childcare.co.uk survey found forty three percent of parents have seen a negative change in their child's behavior since playing games aimed for adults, and almost a quarter said their kids now understand and use negative or offensive language since playing these games. Um, no shit. <laughs> there, are, there are a few drums that we have banged on the show since its inception. And I don't know if we've banged a single drum louder than stop blaming game companies for the content of their games and start blaming the parents that let their child play them when it's probably inappropriate to do so. Yep. And again, I'm not one to tell someone how to parent. It's not my job, but when they flap, slap a warning label on the box and they detail why the game's rated what it is, and you can't get your dumb head out of the mindset of, well, it's just a game. It's a game. It's a game. How bad could it be? It's a game. These are for kids. They're games. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. What do you want? I mean, that'd be really all oh, their behavior's gotten worse. No shit. <laughs> it's not for them. It's not for them. Do they not have Grand Theft Auto as in like the name of the crime over there in the UK? Like, is it called something different? The game originally. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if if it if it had been made in, if it had been uh, an American based game, it would have been called like Carjack Simulator, probably. Yeah, we're not that crazy. of that of that uh of that ilk. <laughs> it but would have yeah. been named the stealing cars, yo. And and so the the founder of the website that did the survey um says it's <laughs> he says interesting that the majority of parents follow film age ratings. Right. Games are <laughs> not as strict, even though games are arguably more impressionable because you spend more time with them. Right. Then you do a film. Um, yeah, man. Again, I, I think I've told this story on this show before. Uh, back at GameStop, there was a time where I remember a mom came in and wanted to get Grand Theft Auto for her six year old son. She told me. And I explained to her why that's probably not a good idea. And her response was, well, he's got to learn about that stuff anyway at some point. And I. Uh, I weep for humanity. Oh, man. So, so, yeah. So, parents, listen. Here's the cool thing about games. They don't go anywhere. Okay? <laughs> there are more people. There, there, are, there are people who were 12 years old when Grand Theft Auto V originally came out that can go into a store and still buy one of the top 10 most popular sold games every single month, Grand Theft Auto V. And it's the exact same game it was when they were 12 as it is when they're 17. Now there is, I understand why some parents just kind of put the armor down because they're just like, it's not worth having this fight. So like, you know, Billy's Billy's mom lets him play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> and when I go to Billy's house, I can watch him play Grand Theft Auto. And you're right. You can't control what your child is exposed to outside of your house. Uh, you can't control what other parents do. So I understand it's it's a tough battle to fight. It's a difficult battle to fight. But I don't know. It, and this goes beyond just ratings, too. And I, I'm getting a little soapboxy here, but God damn it, I don't care. 
I'm so tired of parents bitching about video games. I'm so tired of listening to parents bitch about how much money they're spending on Fortnite V-Bucks. I'm so tired of hearing parents bitch about how much time their kids spend playing video games. Listen, man, when I was a kid, when Michael was a kid, Terrence was a kid, there was no such thing as DLC, but you also didn't have like features built into your console that our parents could, could time out. What I used to do is I used to take my heavy, opaque comforter and I used to drape it over the top of my television and drape it over me and I would sit right in front of the television so I could play Super Nintendo after I was supposed to have gone to bed <laughs> because my mom was wise to that shit or she got wise to that shit and I got in trouble. Nowadays, there's parental controls on the system that you can lock your child out from playing your game console if you want to. You can restrict the types of games that they play. Oh, you don't want to buy V-Bucks anymore? Don't give them your fucking credit card. <laughs> it's not or require a password for purchases. It's not that fucking difficult. It might be more inconvenient. No less inconvenient than like using two-step authentication is on my Google account, but I don't want some fucking Russian hacker breaking in and stealing my fucking emails. <laughs> so... There, the 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 ways to safeguard your child and to keep them from playing stuff you don't want to play are out there, but most people don't care to learn. Yeah, and at that most people, point, it's your fault. Most people don't care to learn, and most people are too afraid to do what my dad did once. I was playing. Uh, I got in trouble because I was playing games like I've been playing games for damn near forty years, and um, and my grades were slipping or some, something. I pissed my dad off, right? He took my Nintendo 64. He yanked the thing from uh, the, the, the television, you know, all the cords and stuff. He yanked it off and he spiked it on the ground. He was so mad at me. He spiked that shit on the ground. And then when I got off of punishment, the testament to the quality of a Nintendo product, that thing fucking worked. But the point was... <laughs> He didn't want me playing that shit, so he took it and he fucking threw it on the ground as hard as as hard as he could. Like, do that. Well, don't do that. These are expensive as shit. Nah, fuck that. Right? They're not gonna hold up like a fucking Super Nintendo would. No, uh, good, good. Do it. <laughs> do it. It's either that or give your kid uh, money for V bucks and spend another six hundred dollars in V bucks. Uh, look. I, you get no sympathy from me, man. I, like you said, there are sa there are safeguards upon safeguards uh, to prevent your kid from buying it. Um, the number one safeguard should be your brain. <laughs> don't buy your kid. Like, all right, let's say you don't know where the 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 rating is. Like in 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 the UK, they have a big red eighteen that is right in the corner. You can't miss it. But let's say you don't know what the rating is. If the name of the game is the it's name a, a of crime, crime. <laughs> don't buy it. You're not, you're not you're not buying your kid possession with intent. <laughs> <laughs> comes out. Don't buy your kid a game called 25 to life. <laughs> Just don't do it, yo. Just don't do it. Jesus Christ. Damn. There's a picture of uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Is a picture of a lunatic with a gun, another lunatic on a motorcycle with a gun, uh, a guy in a mask, and the the scariest thing of all, a Rottweiler. <laughs> I knew you as soon as you started talking about the cover. I knew you were going there. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, it's fantastic. But yeah, like f parents just fucking. Take take the ownership on yourself. That's it, man. Take the ownership on yourself. That's it. Be a it's it's not like I said. The the tools are there for you to use. If you don't want your kid to play Grand Theft Auto, don't let your kid play Grand Theft Auto. That's it. It man. really isn't that hard. That's it. And pay and for fuck's sake, pay attention to what your kid's doing. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I'm not saying you need to become the world's biggest Grand Theft Auto fan or the world's biggest Call of Duty fan. You should at least know what it is. Yeah. But what do I know? So, parents, they just parents. don't understand. They just don't understand. <laughs> We're using it. We are using it. Uh, 
no question of the week this week because uh, I I forgot quite frankly. So. No, <laughs> so no question of the week because you got thrown 15 feet from a cage while all of Pittsburgh decided that they wanted to play Sesame Street and count from 10 to zero, uh, 87 times in one match. You know what? We're at the end of the podcast. It's relatively early. We're only an hour in. We're getting into this. Right? <laughs> Like if you don't want to hear me fucking bitch and moan about wrestling, densepixels.com slash fans. Leave us a five-star review. Subscribe to the show. Use our densepixels.com slash Amazon link for Prime. Follow us on Twitch. All right. It's been well documented that I have a problem with smart fans. Okay. I've been remarkably consistent on this fact for years. For years. Because they, because they, they, these are the, these are the guys that they're, they're too cool for you. They're too edgy. You can't handle our opinions. It's all about us. We like our fun. You know, we like that fun. The wrestling's for us. We, we, you know, we should, you know, listen to us. We know what we're talking about. You know, forget the fact that the guy running the WWE has been running a successful multi million dollar company for the last 35 years. But <laughs> listen to us because we know better than you. Whatever. Okay. You exist. That's fine. So I understand the desire to not have Roman Reigns be the chosen one that main events every pay-per-view, whether he's in the world title picture or not. It's a legitimate beef. I understand it. Okay? Mm-hmm. I understand when you bitch about it. And to be fair, when when you when WWE makes shitty booking decisions and puts Roman in the main event, despite the fact that he's not wrestling for a title every fucking time, and the crowd shits on it, that is your right. Yep. That is your chance to voice your dissent. And, and I don't like it, I don't agree with it, but I accept it. So the rumor was, Extreme Rules, Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley, no titles on the line, uh, no number one contender title shot on the line, just a regular mid-card match was going to main event the pay-per-view. This is on a pay-per-view that had two women's title matches, that had a WWE title match, and that had a Iron Man match for the Intercontinental uh, Championship scheduled. And they were going to main event. That was the rumor. So WWE puts out a poll. They said, what match are you looking forward to the most of Extreme Rules? Overwhelmingly, with like 70% of the vote, the Iron Man match wins. So WWE makes the decision to main event the Iron Man match and put Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley on the mid card where it belongs. Great. You won, IWC. You got you got a, got a feather in your cap, a notch in your belt. You, com- you, you cried out. You demanded that they main event the Intercontinental title match. WWE listened. Congratulations. Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley goes on. It was a fine match. What would you expect? Roman yeah. Reigns, great performer. Dare I say, dragged Bobby Lashley yeah, to a did. competent match. Sorry, Malcolm. He did. Yeah. <laughs> he dragged did. Bobby Lashley to a competent match. Crowd chants. This is boring. Why? They start chanting the moment they lock up. Why? Because Roman Reigns is involved. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll accept. I, you know what? I don't accept it. I don't like it, but I understand where you're coming from because that's just what you're going to do. All right, fine. So we get through the rest of the night. We get to the main event. Iron Man match. Or what did I call it last week? Aluminum Man match. <laughs> Intercontinental <laughs> Championship. 30-minute variety. It's why it's an Aluminum Man match. Seth Rollins. Dolph Ziggler. The internet, dar- the all-time internet darling versus one of the arguably the most respected by the fans wrestler on the roster in Seth Rollins. What happens during this match, Micah? Do does it does the crowd hang on every maneuver? Do they hang on every near fall? Do they hang on the action, the the back and forth action, the Iron Man match? Nope. Here's what we're gonna do. There's a giant countdown clock on the scoreboard that's counting backwards for the 30 minutes for the Iron Man match. So every time we get to 10 seconds, the crowd is going to chant 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> like they do at the Royal fucking Rumble because the wrestling crowd apparently just wanted to entertain themselves. My point is this. WWE often does not give you what you want. Here's a time where they give you what you want. And when that happens, in order to show them your appreciation so that they continue to do things that you want them to do, you must reward them with the attentiveness and the and the desired audience effect that they want for this match. 
But instead, because you've gone into business for yourself, you make Vince McMahon look back and you say, well, you know, these guys, fine, fucking give them what they want. They still shit over a match. You're never going to get an Iron Man match again. <laughs> and Roman Reigns is going to be in every main event. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no chance in hell that Seth Rollins will ever win the WWE title. Oh, man. I may have exaggerated that last point, but the fact remains, you fucked up, Pittsburgh. You fucked up hardcore. What a surprise. Could you <laughs> imagine? Just take a moment for one second and just imagine that type of behavior at any other live event. Uh, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely I mean, not. You, I mean, you, know what the, you know what it is the equivalent of? It is, I mean, it's not the equivalent because they do the shit at wrestling too. But it's, it's, it's like the wave. Yeah, it's the wave. The wave, the wave says, I am so nonplussed and bored by what's in front <laughs> of my face right now that I'm going to participate in a stadium-wide endeavor where you know you raise your arms in the air you know, and, and it rotates its way around the stadium. And we do this in conjunction and how fun is this? But it sucks. It does suck, man. Like, I look, if I'm bored, I'm just leaving. Like, I don't know what the I don't know what the issue is. It's, it's, it's no, the issue is is this like firmly held belief that I paid for this ticket, so I get to do whatever the fuck I want. And you can't, man. You can't. Like, like if you're in a if you're in a movie theater, thank you. Or if you don't like this shit, Broadway musical, right? And, thank like you. you're to fucking Hamilton, and you're sitting in the audience, and you're fucking heckling, you know, Alexander Hamilton, and fucking shouting out like, "Watch out for Aaron Burr," <laughs> like and shit like that. Like when you're fucking heckling, guess what happens? You get kicked the fuck out, right, of the theater because that shit's inappropriate, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Wrestling crowds exist to enhance the action in the ring, not to distract from it. Yeah. And again, if they're serving you up, I, I mean, I said this verbatim in the group last night, but if they're serving you up a dog turd of a match, fine. <laughs> voice, your, voice your malcontent, boo them, tell them the match sucks, because guess what? If they're, if they're serving you a shit match, they usually know they're serving you a shit match, and they expect to get shit. But when they give you what you want, when they give you Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler in an Iron Man match for the Intercontinental Championship, and it's the main event, and that's all you wanted. When you sit there and fucking count down on the clock, and then when they take the clock down, and all you just start saying, where's the clock? Where's the clock? You <laughs> fucked it up for everybody else. And I'm, I'm unfairly casting blame on Pittsburgh fans. Because I'm fairly certain that this shit probably would have happened in Philadelphia. It probably would have happened in Chicago. It probably would have happened in fucking Montreal. Pick whatever wrestling hotbed city you want. It probably would have happened there too. And that fucking sucks. I hate you, Smarks. I fucking hate you. You ruined it for everybody else. Just want to watch my wrestling match and enjoy it. Sitting there in the fucking background. <laughs> Fuck off. And look. Once in a while, all right, they were doing it every 10 seconds. Every minute they were doing that shit. Like, come on, man. God damn it. It's one thing soccer gets right. They, they count the clock upward. Yeah. <laughs> Can't, do that. Can't do that with a soccer clock. So, that was my rant on Smarks. I loved it. I love Mad Brad. <laughs> Swear to God. So that's it. You stayed to the end. Congratulations. You're <laughs> really, really pissed. <laughs> See you next week. See ya. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.